Today, I am going to be showing you how to use flash print software to prepare an STL file for 3D printing. So the first thing we're going to need is an STL file to print. So we're going to click on load. And in my downloads, I have an STL file that I got off of Thingiverse. This is a Mockingjay pin from the Hunger Games series. So as you see, when I open it, it'll ask if I want to put this model on the platform because it's well currently off the platform. Just click on yes. This happens quite often. You'll notice it raised the model up and it brought it into the center of our build area. Now this is extremely important. This box represents the build volume of the printer that we're using. So right now if I have anything outside of this box it will not print and it will cause an error. Now to be able to view this a little bit easier, we can click on the view button and either click top view, bottom view, right view, left view, you get the idea. Now out of all of these, the most important one is the bottom view. You'll notice when I click on the bottom view, the model is showing up blue. Now that is extremely important. The blue represents where the model is adhering to the build plate. So the FlashForge finders have a blue removable build plate. The model needs to be printed directly onto the build plate. If there's any space between them, it'll just squirt molten plastic into the air and nothing's going to happen. You're going to get a big glob of plastic instead of your 3D model. Adhering is extremely important. So it has to be blue along the whole surface that it's printing to. To view that, again, you click on View, Bottom View. If you're trying to rotate around, you can also hold control or use the right mouse button to go into a free view. Now, I'll show you what would happen if it wasn't lined up properly. If I click on move and I click my model, if I had raised this a little bit, see how the model slowly moved off the build plate a little bit? And now I kind of rotate around it, you'll notice that I can see underneath it. Well, imagine you're a printer and you're trying to print in the midair. How well is that going to work? All that plastic is simply going to drip down and isn't going to print properly. So you have to make sure that any model you print is on the platform. So a good way to make sure of that is to first of all check to see that the bottom is blue. Or if you're having trouble, just go to move and click on platform. By default, it will be centered. However, if the model is not centered, you can simply click on center. You get your best results printing directly in the center of the build plate. If you want to change the rotation of it, you can click on the rotation button and use one of these three rings to turn your model. You have to be very careful with this, however. For instance, if I rotated it along the x-axis, notice it turns red. That is because the model is now clipping through the bottom of my build plate. Obviously, this would not print properly because it's trying to print something underneath the build plate, and it can't do that. We'll just undo that. There we go. Now we're back to where it should be. Probably the most useful tool over here, besides the ability to view and move, is the scale tool. Now, scaling allows us to simply click and drag to make the model either smaller or larger. Just be careful. You can see the wall turn red. That is because the model is clipping through on the side over here. Again, it will not print properly. So make sure if you're going to scale it that you're staying within the bounds of the build area. Now, the next thing to do is actually print it. So we're going to click on print. And all these options are going to open up. Now, most of the time, the default options will print just fine. It's important to make sure that your extruder is at 220 degrees Celsius if you're printing in PLA filament, which we will be. The thing you may need to change if you have a larger model is the infill. And this refers to how much plastic is going to be made inside of it. You'll notice this little setting that says fill density, 15%. A 3D printed object is not solid plastic. The printer prints a 
either hexagonal or triangular or linear structure inside of it. So it doesn't need to be solid plastic. It's actually mostly air inside of a 3D model. You can change that density if you need a model that is stronger. So raising this up, let's say to 30%, will make your model stronger. I do not recommend going any higher than that for most models, as it's going to use a lot of plastic and is going to take a lot of time. The other thing you may need to do are enable supports, depending on the type of model you're printing. This model does not need supports, and I will cover how to do them in a later video. The last option you may want to click on is raft. Now, a raft is, well, exactly what it sounds like. It's a piece of plastic that your model is going to be built on top of. So imagine a raft like in the middle of a lake. You stand on top of it and you kind of float on the water. Well, that's what a raft is here. It's a big square of plastic that will print underneath your model and your model's printed on top of it. This adds stability for some structures that are maybe a little bit top heavy or are going to be larger on top, meaning they'll tip easier. The raft can prevent that. Most of the time, however, for the models we're working with, all the default settings are fine. So if we hit OK, it's going to ask us to select a place to save it, and we're going to hit Save. Now when we hit Save, it's going to slice our model. Now a slice is basically a layer. So this is our sliced 3D model. Now it gives us an approximate print time and tells us how many meters of material we're using. This little pin is going to take 3.47 meters of PLA filament. The nice thing with this view is we can watch exactly what the 3D printer is going to do layer by layer using the slider on the side. I'm going to bring this all the way down to the bottom. So layer one, you will see this is what the 3D printer is going to print out. This line over here that goes around it is actually the printer's way of clearing its nozzle before it starts printing your actual model. This little piece will just be taken off and thrown away later. But you can see it does the entire outline of our mocking J-pin. And then layer by layer, it's building up on it. Now at this layer here, about five to six layers in, you can see it's building that inner hexagonal structure. So again, most of the inside of this will actually be air. However, this structure, this honeycomb structure, is very strong. And it's going to keep printing up almost the entire height of it until we get towards the top. And here we have all the details and the feathers until we get to the very top. And there's a print. So it's a nice way to preview your print to see if there's any errors. If you go through the layers and you notice that at any point you have a piece of your model that's just hanging out in open space, that will not print properly. So it's always a good idea to go back here and check. Once you've ensured everything is all set, you're either going to connect your computer via Wi-Fi using one of the Wi-Fi addresses printed on the machines, or you can actually plug it in physically and connect your machine using the USB and it should find it. Once that is done, you click on send G-code and the printer will begin printing your model.